guys have probably noticed a big slowdown in videos lately, and that's because I've been struggling with this lock uh, put together by Lorco. He lives in Steinbach, and that's Steinbach, Canada, believe it or not. Anyway, um, it is his second challenge lock, I think is what he said in the note. Um, here's what the key looks like. The key was mummified, but after more than, more than a few hours of trying to pick it, I thought maybe I better make sure the lock works, so I unwrapped the key and it worked perfectly. It's a little bit, a uh, little stiff, but it, it did, it functioned perfectly. I can't blame my inability uh, on stiffness in the lock. All right, it has some weirdness, and weirdness you're not going to believe. But first, let's take a look at these pins, see how he had it pinned up. Get some focus going here. Maybe I'll go ver a little more vertical. There we go, better on the focus. All right, on the bottom here, all we had, nothing unusual until you get to pin number five. Got a little cut in the top. Try to remember this, and well, we'll refer back to it. On the top pins, on the drivers, notice we have the first four very sharp, these are all handmade pins, so I hesitate to call them spools or serrated. It's kind of a mix between. Try to remember the sharp edges, though, because all of those are going to come into play. Uh, number five is the only standard pin in the whole bunch, and it's also the one with a steel spring, as you see there. Get that dude back in there, because we're going to talk about those. And the last pin is nothing but part of a steel... You know, I should know better than to touch that, huh? A steel screw, that's all that is. Uh, but it proved to be <laughs> more than just a little challenge to get inside of this thing. On the springs, if that wasn't bad enough with those pinnings, he's got variations in the springs as well. I think there's only two that are the same, number six and number one. The rest of those kind of are variations. These, the two steel ones, look to be almost the same. So we have a lot of variation in tension. Now let's take a look at the core. And this is where we're going to start to see. I'm going to save the best part for last. First, let's take a look at, at the Bible itself. Now you see we got some threading in there. We had threading in, let's see, if I can remember that. Chamber number one, chamber number six, and chamber number five. Oh, also chamber number four. So we got four of them. The only two not threaded are, I think it was three and four. That's about it. I'm trying to get this straight now. The only one not threaded is chamber number three. Let me take that back. So everything in there is basically threaded. All right, now let's look at the weirdness. I know you've been eyeing this ugly, ugly looking core. I mean, that looks like a true hack job. Like somebody took out it with a chisel and a hammer and a couple of rocks and just beat that baby into submission. There's a lot more to it than what you might think. First of all, take a look at these first four chambers. They're all undercut. They have a little, they've been widened there on both sides. And then threading, we have threading in chamber number six. I think you can see it. And of course that, number six, is where that screw was. So now you know why he was so difficult. Now you look at this, why in the world did a beaver decide to make a meal out of this core? And that is because of that. It's a very thin piece of curved steel that Lorco has cut to fit just like that. Now by doing that, notice what he's happened, other than the handiwork, which is literally, it's a perfect fit. And this explains why it was a little bit rough to turn. I mean, it turned perfectly, it was just really stiff. But if take a look at what he's done here. Remember, those first four are undercut on both sides. And by putting this very thin, I mean, I'm not going to say razor sharp, but super thin piece of curved steel on top of there, he's gouged it out, he's beavered it out there so that it fits perfectly lines up with those holes perfectly and now on those gouged out lips we have a very deep undercut on both sides there. The only standard core is number five because that baby right there is threaded. All four of these are undercut. So how did that come into play? Well, let's take another look at the pins. Let's look at pin number one through four. Remember we said the sharp edges on all four of those? That's why it kept getting caught up inside of there and of course chamber number five was threaded both on the Bible, I never learned, do I? Both on the Bible uh, and on the core, making this a very, very nasty lock coming out of Steinbach, Canada. It's almost German-like, isn't it? 
And I've got to tell you, Lorco has a German last name, so I'm thinking maybe he's a transplant, but he brought all of that alien tech from the motherland with him. Anyway, fellas, thanks for your time. Stay safe, stay legal. Lorco, I don't want to see number three, man. This is it. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.